Okay. Looks like we are live already. <clears throat> see if I can get the camera at a little bit better angle here. Not like that, I suppose. Oh, wow. All right, it's already showing we have, <laughs> we have seven viewers, eight viewers already. I am a few minutes early. Uh, I was supposed to start at seven, but I like to try to get in here and get everything kind of set up. Because using my phone for a camera is uh, a lot different than using my camera. But we don't have enough subscribers yet to uh, use the camera. We will get there eventually. Just going to take a little patience, I suppose. How's everybody doing tonight? You hear me? And is the is the picture okay? Or do I need to make any adjustments before I start? Anybody? Or can you even hear me? Alright. Hmm. Mic check one, two. Mic check one, two. Anybody? Can anybody hear me at all? Oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank y'all. I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't getting a response. I was starting to get worried. How's everybody doing tonight? Thank all you guys for being here. I appreciate it. Oh, Fitz, I don't know where you're from, but run some of that rain to Mississippi, man. We need it. We need it bad. Thank you, Q-Dog. Yeah, it's, uh, I, like I said, I was a few minutes early. I got in here and tried to get everything set up. I'm fixing to get kicked off here in a minute. Virginia, Okay. Oh, they were calling for a slight chance for rain for us today here in Mississippi, but we didn't get a drop, and we need it in a bad way. Hey, Bobby, how are you? I watched that video you did today on the reflections. And that water, man, just, I'm telling you, when you get famous, you please remember me, okay? Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I know that's asking a lot, but yeah, they had me. Uh, they had me down for a week. Uh, what is that down? I'm just gonna say down. Uh, actually, it was up Sunday night. I did a I did my first live back again Sunday night, and uh, no no it was yeah Sunday night. Then I think I painted Tuesday night, and then again tonight. But there's a setting on here that uh, you have to get your audience to be 18 or over, and I didn't know about that setting. So I found it, and uh, now I'm using it. So it's it's kind of helping. I uh, think I'm going to do like a little winter scene tonight, uh, Bobby. With the moon, yes, it will have a moon. It's going to be a night scene. I'm going to attempt to. Who knows what will end up actually happening. I may, end <laughs> I may end up having to scrap it. You never know. And with it being live, I can't edit it. So whatever happens is going to happen. You guys will see it. Unedited right here. Hey, Rod, how are you? Thank you for being here, brother. I hope y'all got them tapping fingers ready tonight because there's going to be a lot of tapping going on if y'all tap every time I tap because I got a lot of tapping to do tonight. <laughs> it's going to be a fun pain, though. If it turns out like my head seeing it, it should be kind of pretty. I hope. If not, we'll say we tried. That's all we can do. Okay, if there's anybody out there that's wanting to paint along with us tonight, I've got a, I'm using a 16 by 20 canvas. Uh, as you can tell, black. I got it turned on landscape. And I've already got a thin, even coat of liquid clear on it. And I covered the entire canvas from top to bottom with thalo blue. And the colors I got out are Prussian blue, phthalo blue, titanium white, ivory black. I've got some burnt umber and dark sienna. And if I need any colors as I go along, I'll, I'll put them out. But as of right now, those are the only colors I think I'm going to need. I don't have a prep canvas. Well, I'm sorry about that, buddy. Uh, I tell you what, if you want to follow along on the next one, I'll be doing a white canvas next. So you need to prep one. How long would it take you to get one prep? If you do, you have a black canvas, or you got to paint it and let it dry.
Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If you uh, become a follower follower, you can catch me next time. Okay. Well, that's just what you said. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Let me get this camera try to center up just a little bit on this on this canvas here. All right. Can everybody see it pretty good? Put this on YouTube. I gotta, I gotta try to figure out how to do that, Rod. I really do. They say you can download the TikTok videos, but I ain't figured all that just out just yet. I need to, I need to work on that. All right. First thing I did was picked up a one-inch brush, and I'll come right up here in my titanium white first. I'm just going to load a little on the brush. It don't take a whole lot of paint when you uh, paint on a black canvas. Because these colors will pop. <coughs> and I'm just going to come over here on this right side somewhere. And just start making me a little bright spot in the sky. And I'm just going to just kind of work around. And you can see it start picking up some of the thalo blue as it goes around. Not like so. And then the further you get away from the light source, the darker it'll start getting. Or that's what we hope will happen anyway. bring it down just a little bit give ourselves kind of a little small horizon right there about like so thank you alchemist I appreciate that thank you for being here now you can come back to this center as many times as you want and and brighten it up but every time you come back to the canvas tonight, make sure you have a clean, dry brush. Uh, with this liquid clear on here, if you come back up there with thinner, it will have a reaction, a chemical reaction. And it'll cause uh, all kind of bubbling and, and spotting. and It'll do all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> So just make sure your brush is dry when you come back up to the canvas. That's like the one of the most important tips I can give you anytime you're using liquid clear is be careful with it and the thinner together. They are they do react to one another. All right, I'm gonna come back up here. And I'll pick up just a little bit more white. Not much. Just a tiny bit. Not much at all. And we'll come back in my center again. Because I want that to be the brightest spot of my painting. And again, I'm just going to start working myself out. Just little egg strokes. That's all I'm doing. Just little egg strokes. And then the further we get away from the moonlight, the darker we want it to get. Just about like so. All right, now I'm going to pick up a clean, dry two inch brush. Just make sure it's clean and dry. And I'm going to come up here, and I'll start my center again. Let's get this hair off there first. We don't need no hairs in our painting. All right. And it ain't wanting to go away. All right. I'm just going to... Okay. This is starting to get frustrating. <laughs> Am I going to have to beat the devil out of this brush?
new brush. No, actually, it's an old brush. I think it's about time to condition them. They, uh, I've been painting with them quite a bit before, and I ain't conditioned them lately, so I may need to do that. All right, I'm going to start up here, and I just want to lightly brush across the sky, just kind of blend some of these brush strokes together some. I've got a uh, brush conditioner rod. Uh, of course, it's way over yonder on the shelf. I can't get my hands on it right now to show it to you. I thought I had a bottle sitting over here on my table, but I don't. It's just a brush conditioner, a Bob Ross brush conditioner. All right. I'm going to blend some of these X stroke brush marks that I left up here, but I don't want them all gone. Um, I want it to kind of show some movement in the sky. You gotta be kidding me. All right. And then I'll lightly go over it again. Just want to be careful not to blend out my bright spot. I want to leave it. I do not want to get rid of my bright spot. All right, now I'm going to take that, that brush that my mama gave me, that finger right there, and I'm going to come up here in my bright spot, and I'm going to make just a little round circle, about like so. And we'll let that represent our moon. And then I'm going to come over here and grab me another one inch brush, clean and dry again. And I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to stand it straight up and pull out some of this white and just tap straight down into the white. And I'm going to concentrate more on that corner up top than I am the bottom part actually. And I want to come right up here. And I'll start, I'm going to start about here. And I want to just start tapping. Y'all hear that? I said tapping. <laughs> and I'm just going to tap on some color across here. And I'm just lightly tapping. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really putting a lot of, a lot of pressure in it, just... Just kind of lightly tapping. And I'm going to come all the way over. And start getting lighter as I work out the canvas over there. Then I'll come right back up here. And as I get further back over here, I want to get lighter also. Because the further it comes off the canvas, the darker I want it to get back here. About like so. Well, thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. All right, now I'm going to take my two inch brush that I was using. I'm going to come up here and I just want to lightly blend out the bottom, just real lightly, not applying a lot of pressure. Just real lightly, blending out the bottom, all the way across, just like so. Just keep that brush moving. Then I'm going to come up here, and I just want to fluff these up a little. Be careful when you get right there at your moon, you don't want to, you don't want to distort your moon. About like so. And then very lightly, 
brush across, take out some of the brush strokes. Now you can brush across your moon real lightly if you want to right there also. Set it down in the paint. <coughs> but just come back up here and just slightly blend out the bottoms. I like so. I'm going to go ahead and take and drop that two inch brush in the thinner. And then my one inch brush, I'm just going to knock some of the paint out of it over here on my paper towel. Then I'm going to come right back up here in my white again. Pull out a little more. Just a little. And I'm going to come right back under this cloud, but I'm going to come down into the mist just a little bit. I'm not going to come real close to it. I'm going to leave a little, little separation in here so you can see the, the color under the other cloud. I want it to look like, I want it to look like two clouds, one on, one in front of the other. That's the illusion I'm going for. If it works out. I just don't want to kill that, that little bit of mist that's under there. Because that's my separator. But now in some places you can come up a little if you want to. But then just carry it on off the canvas too. And then just like before, up here I want to. Just start letting it get darker as it goes off the canvas. And then I'll wash that brush. And make sure it's dry. Stray hair right here. I do not know what's going on with these hairs tonight. Alright, then I'm going to come up here. I'll just use this one inch brush. And I just want to blend out the bottom again. Real lightly. Just real light. Hey Mark, this is oil paint. up here and blend that bottom out again come back fluff it up again just like we did the other one and then very lightly set it down into the painting just real light And just kind of blend it up. Just like so. All right, now real quick, I'm gonna pick up a filbert brush. I'm gonna put some white right on the tip of it. And I'm gonna come up here where I'm real close to the moon at. And I wanna highlight a couple of these spots along here. I just want to get get more bright than uh 
than some of the other spots. Since they are closer to my light source, I want them to kind of stand out a little. Because I would think being that close to the moon, they're going to, they're really going to light up out here. Then on this one down here as well. Now you don't you don't have to put this everywhere if you don't want to. Just where you think the the moonlight would really catch your cloud and, and light it up. Just kind of give yourself a little indication of brighter brighter tops on your clouds. And that'll just actually, it'll make your moon look like it's glowing more. And that's better than trying to come up and pull off a light rays. Um, I got a little too much paint up here to, to try and do that without making mud. So I'll just brighten my, my moon up by adding some white color to my clouds. How long have you been painting, and how often do you practice? Uh, Q Dog, I've been I've been painting about five years now. Uh, my first, when I first started, I started with acrylic, and I ended up getting in touch with a Bob Ross instructor, and did my first oil painting about. About five, well, yeah, about five years ago on my first oil painting. So I actually been painting closer to six, I guess, now. I'm getting old, so I lose time. Uh, when I when I painted with her, I painted with her about a year, and that was once a month. And I practice as much as I could. I mean course not every day but I practiced then as probably three times a week I'd say and then I'd go paint with her about once a month and while I was painting with her I, uh, I actually found out what it would take for me to become a Bob Ross instructor and that's what I did I went to New Smyrna Beach and I studied there under a guy named Nick Hankins. And Nick is a, he is a wonderful painter. And I became a Bob Ross instructor. And now I've been a Bob Ross instructor about three years. And now I practice, God, <laughs> a lot. Now I practice probably every day sometimes two or three times a day just depends on if I've got a lot of paints to do for other people I'm not behind right now but I have been behind I've had so many to do so I've been I've been pretty fortunate God's blessed me uh, but I do love it so that's that's the thing And I found out pretty quick, you got to love it to, to do it. Because if you don't love it, and it don't make you happy, then you're not going to, you're just not going to put as much into it, I think. That's my feelings on it. All right, I'm gonna come over here. About no, let's let's do it about right here. I'm gonna come in here under this cloud, and I'm gonna 
I'm going to start scraping some of this paint out in here. Just to kind of give myself the kind of a layout for a little mountain in here that I'm going to attempt to put in. Alright, I'm going to come over here now and pick some of my black. And there again, this is just straight ivory black. I'm not using Mountain Mix tonight. And I want to come up into this cloud and just put indication of a little mountain shape up here. And I want it to be kind of rough. I don't need a real smooth mountain. About like so. And I'll bring it this way a little. Not like so. And then I'll pull it out that way a little. And I'll pull this side down a little. Not like that. Give it another little kick out over here. Not like so. I'm going to scrape out as much of this paint as I can here. And I guess since I already got this one inch brush dirty, I can use it right quick. I'll come right up here to the edge and just start pulling this color down. Just like so. I'm going to get in here as close to these edges as I can without going out of them and just pull that color down. Thank you, Tiffany. These are actually uh, magnets that I took out of a old computer hard drive. Thank you, Bobby. All right, I'm gonna come right up here now and just start. I'm just gonna start pulling these colors out and pull them out and down. That's all I'm gonna do for now. Just like so. I'm just going to let it kind of fade out along the bottom there. It's real light across here. Just let it pull all the way across. All right, I'll go ahead and wash that brush. Now I'm going to pick up my knife. And <clears throat> I don't want to, I don't want a huge amount of highlights up here. Because I think the clouds would probably block some of the light. But I am going to put a little 
highlight up here I thought about leaving it silhouetted but since it's so much lower than the mountain I think a little light probably would hit it I think if I came up with it a little more I probably would have left it silhouetted but I'm, I think I am going to highlight it just a tad I'm going to come right over here on this little edge first and I'm just going to start pulling down some color now with that being black under it it may want to it may want to gray my color down some and if it does well that's fine I'm not going to fight it because like I said I don't really want it I don't want it too lit up no way I'm going to come up here to this next little peak I just, I want to make sure I leave plenty of darkness over here as well. Because this is, uh, this mountain is supposed to represent a far away mountain. So I don't, I don't want a whole lot of highlight on it. I want to try to leave it as, as indistinct as I can. I'm just going to lightly pull down. Just let that paint break just a little. Because <clears throat> if it gets lit up back here it gets and it gets too bright, I'm scared it's going to take away from the whole night effect that I'm trying to go for here. And I, I really don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to just very, very lightly. I mean, I may go over it a couple times. Thank you, Shannon. I appreciate that. I may even end up going over it a couple times just to pull some of the black up into it to where it will gray down some. To keep from getting real, real bright. Because painting on a black canvas, the colors pop out anyway. So if you get up here and you add way too much white, it's, it's just going to, it's going to glow. this way just a little but this is such a light light touch it's just barely touching letting that paint break just ever so light Thank you, Q-Dog. I appreciate that. Now you can see right in here where it's starting to pick up just a tad bit of the blue. And that's that's good. I mean, we don't want to fight that. We, we want that to happen. So it's not, it's not something we want to be real worried about. All right, now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a little of my Prussian blue. Probably about the size of an m, &M I guess, if I had to guess. Maybe a melted m, &M. And then I'm going to pick up just a little of the white, probably half that. And just bring up into it and just mix them together just real lightly. I'm going to leave some of the white uh, showing. Thank you, Kim. This is just marble mixed here. And I'm going to use this for a shadow color. And since everything around us is blue, 
we're just going to use this blue with a little white. And I'm going to come over here at this corner first. And I just want to kind of start working my way down. Real light. Same amount of pressure as before. Just real light. Let it just let it pull off in, in places. Showing some of the dark under it. And if you have a problem doing that, ease up on your touch just a little. Because this is not a very very hard touch at all. It's a, it's a light touch. Then I'm going to come over here. And then I'll come right over here behind my my highlight and I'll just start easing it down same way just real real light and just let that color pull off the knife just real easy just like so Haven't had m and for a while. Now you just... <laughs> we'll go get you some m and Bobby. <laughs> I hadn't had none in a while either. Not that I need them. I used to make myself a trail mix sometimes. and I put them m and in them. Just real lightly here. Just pulling this color down. And it don't take near as much shadow color as it does your highlight color. And that's any mountains you're doing. It does not nighttime mountains. It's daytime mountains or whatever. It, it does not take near as much on your shadow side. Because you already got that dark base in there. So. Yeah, that seems to be your issue a lot, Kim. You uh, you using too much paint sometimes, and then sometimes not enough. And learning when to when to use the right amount is as important as not using it at all. So, but now that'll come with time, just like everything else. Now, I'm going to come back up here and grab just a little bit of my black now. And I'm going to come back up here in my, some of my shadow area. And I want to add a little bit of black back to it. Just to uh, kind of tone it down some. Because I don't want it, I don't want it really glowing. And I want to be able to see the the darkness on this side too, just like we see it on this side. So, like that should be fine. All right, now I'm gonna pick me up another one-inch brush. I'm going to come up here and I'm just start tapping the bottom. And I want to tap this the same direction it's coming down. Just real lightly. 
He's tapping this color down the same direction that it's coming down. Just like this. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. In the same direction that the paint's coming down, I'm just going to tap up into it real lightly. I'm not tapping hard at all. I don't want to destroy it. I just want to lightly diffuse it. Not like so. And that is a very light tap. Mushroom man. Hey y'all and birds. Hey Diane. Oh, uh, mushroom, did you have to quit or, or what happened? Thank you, sir. All right, now I'm going to very, very lightly pull that color back up into the mountain in the same direction. Just real light. And I'm going to do both sides the same way. Just real light. And all that's doing is just taking out those few brush marks that we just made. And I'll come along the bottom and just kind of blend them out. About like so. All right, now, this brush has got quite a bit of blue in it. So I think what I'm going to do right quick, because I'm going to go ahead and wash it right quick. I got a whole bucket full of brushes over here I got to wash. Black canvas painting is, is notorious for that, but... I guess it just goes with the territory. You got to do what you got to do. All right, now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pick me up just a little bit more white on my one inch brush. Don't take much. And I'm just going to start down here where I got all this other blue at. And I'm just going to fill it in because at some point we're going to need to use this color anyway for shadows or water or whatever. So we'll go ahead and Put it in. Now we don't know where the where the brightest colors are going to be just yet. We know they're going to be in this area under the moon, but we'll wait before we go to making areas brighter until we see where everything lines up at. For the most part, we just want to get some some blue color down here. So when we start uh, putting in our snow later, we'll have we'll have some areas that we can use for shade and reflection, and we'll already have it in. And we're just coming right up to the mountain there. About like so. Thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that. 
All right, now I'm going to knock some color out of my brush again. I'm going to pick up just a little more white. I'm going to come up here with just little round circles now across here. And I just want to create like a little, a little mist. Then I'll come along here and just tap it out. There I go tapping again. I just want this to look like a layer of mist going across here. Now I'm rubbing this pretty hard. Because I want it to, I want it to appear as mist at the foot of that mountain. Just like so. Then I'll blend it all out. All right, do we have any questions so far as to where we at? I don't know if everybody was here when I first started or not, but to bring everybody up to speed, I started out with a black canvas, covered it with a thin, even coat of liquid clear, then covered it with a thin coat of uh, phthalo blue, Painted in the clouds, painted in the moon, and painted in the mountain, and just added white down here to uh, bring out some of this blue for when we need it later for our shadows and water or whatever else we decide to put in. And if there's any questions about anything I've done so far, feel free to ask. And I will try my best to answer it. <clears throat> Most friends, what happened while you had to quit doing oil? Or he might not have been in the room now. I don't know. How did Bob pass? How did Bob die? Uh, I think it was leukemia. There's John. Hey, John, how are you? Tell me again about what you've done with Canvas. Okay, it was a uh, black canvas. I put a thin, even coat, a very thin, even coat of liquid clear. Then I covered it with a low blue. And then I started painting with white. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if y'all are aware or not of uh, the contest that I had going on Tuesday night at 1,500 followers. I was giving away a painting. And uh, the, the deal was, since I went over, 
1500 that night, you could actually win that painting, or you could make your choice of the one I'm painting tonight. And uh, thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. And uh, I did the drawing today, and actually the, in the, the winner just entered the room. His name is uh, John Knafel. Congratulations, John. You uh, you won the drawing. The magic number was 154, and you were the 154th follower. So you have your choice of paintings. You can either choose that campfire painting that we done Tuesday night. I think you were here. I think you saw that painting. Or you can... If you're here when this is over, if you like this one, you can win it. But congratulations, you uh, you are the winner. Well, I thank you for supporting the channel. I really do. And that's all I'm doing is just trying to figure out ways to kind of give back to the people that are helping me because uh, without you guys I wouldn't be here I'd just be sitting here painting by myself and actually painting and, and having people to interact with makes it way more fun it's fun either way but this is way more fun so my thanks goes out to all of you guys. Without the followers, then, like I said, I'm just, I'm painting to a old as dirt. <laughs> I'm just painting to a, to an empty crowd. All right, if we don't have any questions, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and get get started on the next couple phases here. Oh yeah, Q Dog. All you gotta do is just jump in, man. That's all. Uh, John, yes, I do. Actually, I've uh, I've taken old paintings and sanded them down and regessoed them and paint over them. And some of them weren't just to practice. Some of them were actually uh, paintings that actually sold. If you get that canvas uh, sanded down enough, it's just like starting on a brand new canvas. You can actually uh, put liquid white on it and the whole nine yards. But I have done it to practice too. I sure have. I've got a little small handheld sander that I picked up at Ace Hardware. And I start out with uh, it's it's real it's just real uh, I can't remember the grit it's it's real smooth the first one I start with is kind of smooth and then I move up to a very smooth one thank you Michelle thank you for being here and uh, I just I just go over it until I don't feel any any high spots and then I take a little bit of uh, alcohol and wipe it down and let it dry and then I'll just sew it then I'll sand it down again thank you skeet if that just so after I just sew it if I still not happy with the way it feels I'll uh, sand it down just a little more till I get it smooth and then I'll just sew it again and then I can usually paint on it after that 
but I don't use no 80 grit or nothing like that on it. It's I, I don't I don't know the grits. I'd have to I'd have to look, but I will if I can remember to. Yes, sir. All right. I guess we'll go ahead now and uh, start this next step. Maybe 220. It may be 220. I kind of wanted to say 220, but I wasn't 100% sure. But it, it, may, it may very well be. All right. I'm going to come right up here now my Prussian Blue. Still using the one-inch brush. And I'm just going to tap a little paint right on the brush. And I'm going to come over here. I'm just going to start just lightly tapping. A little foothill across here. Just like so. Then I'll come up over here and just start working it down. Give myself a little body under it. I don't, I don't want it real skinny looking like that. But the further I go down, the lighter it gets. It almost fades out. See how it's doing that? Then over here, since I'm in this white, I'll pick up a little more, a little more blue, and I'll tap it and give it somebody on this side. About like so. About like that. Now it is, is tapping. Y'all did hear that, right? Tapping. <laughs> Alright, then I'm going to come right up here on the top. And I'm just going to flick straight up. Just straight up. And that's going to give me the indication of thousands and thousands of little trees back here. Just by flicking that brush straight up. That's all I'm doing. Just flicking it straight up. Just like so. All the way across. I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not. With it being me using my phone tonight. But then you can just come down here and just keep pulling up. And down here in these light spots, it'll even show some, some trees. Now, if you decide to do this painting at home, you'll see them. It'll look like just thousands of little trees across here at the base of your mountain. <clears throat> then I'm going to knock out as much paint as I can. I just brush over here on this paper towel. And when I say that, you can see about how much paint comes out of that brush. It's a it's a pretty good bit. Hey, Locksmith, how you doing tonight? Thank you for dropping in. All right. Then we'll come back up here, and I'm gonna go back into my white again. Grab just a little bit of it, tap it on the brush again. Then I'm gonna come across the bottom of that little <clears throat> that little uh foot here we just made. And I just want to tap in some white all along the bottom, just quick like that. Then I'm gonna wash the brush. <laughs> 
And then again, I'm going to make sure it's good and dry. Because it has to be dry before we go back up. Yeah, he does. He really does. All right. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to tap this white out. And I want this to represent some mist across here. Now I'm tapping this pretty hard. Just like so. Now if you get to some stubborn spots that don't want to mist out, just take your brush and just brush them out. That's all you got to do. And they're gone. Just like that. Then you can take your brush and come back in here like you're doing a cloud. Just making little circles. And just kind of mist it in. And then lift it up across the bottom. Pull that mist on into your, uh, yeah, this thing, <laughs> your land. And just let it, just kind of let it blend out. Just like so. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, wash this brush again. All right, then I'm going to come up here again and pick up a little more white. Just a little. And I'm going to come up here at the base of that mist, but I don't want to go all the way up into the mist. I want to leave some of it showing. And I want to come in here and just start just pulling out some white across here. Just about like so. Then I'll come on this side. And I'll start pulling out some more, just along the bottom and stuff like this. Just get some white out here. And once you get it out here, you can start working with it. And start getting your lay of the land how you want it. And this is entirely up to you how you want your land laid out. And you can pull some shadows into it. That's what we got that blue on there for. All right, now we mentioned that moonlight earlier. So our moon's up here. And now I think if you're going to, if you're going to give any attention to your moon at all, I think you, I think your highlights are probably going to start about here. And probably go over to about here. Because I think that mountain's going to catch it from there. So right in here, we want to be our brightest spot. And that'll look like the moon's kind of... Thank you, Paula. That'll kind of look like the, uh, the moon's hitting this area right in here. So that's kind of what we'll let happen. And we'll just... We'll try to keep that in, in focus as much as we can throughout the painting. 
so we don't lose this spot eventually. But now with that said, you also got to keep it blended into your dark. You don't want just a big white glob of paint sitting there. You kind of want it, you kind of want it blended in to where this out here stays kind of darker, but you end up with a light spot kind of in the middle. All right, now, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll come up here. I'll grab me a new brush right quick. All right, I'm going to grab me a fan brush right quick. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get just a little bit of the black. And I'm going to come over into my Prussian blue. And I'm going to get me just a little of it. I'm mixing these colors right on the brush. That's ivory black and Prussian blue. All right. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to start up pretty tall. I want, a, I want a pretty tall little tree over here. I'm just going to build a little evergreen right quick. We'll bring it down right onto the snow. Just like that. Then I'm going to take the corner of this brush. And I'll start touching at the top. And I just want to just real lightly push up on it. Just real light as I'm coming down. Just pushing up with the corner. Just real light from side to side. Just real light. Just like so. I hope that's showing up. Do it again. Same colors. Just load the brush up on both sides. Come right back up here. This time I'll start a little. I'll start a little shorter. I'll bring another one down. Oh, do, 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 do. this is a number three. No, number four. This is a number four fan brush. You can do it with a three. All right, I'm going to come right back up here to this little tree. I'm going to start it the same way. You start at the top. And just real lightly start working our way down. Just start from the middle out. I'm just bending them bristles up. These are the up trees. We've seen Bob make them a few times. Hey there, first time watching. I'm already obsessed. This is beautiful. Well, thank you, Danielle. I appreciate that. I really do. Uh, thank you for stopping in. I, I, I appreciate it. All right, then I'm all, I loaded up my brush again. That's all I did. And I'm just going to come back up here. And I'm just going to continue down. Same way. And I'll stop it about right there in the snow as well. I hope I haven't missed any comments or any questions. If I have, I apologize, guys. Uh, 
once I start concentrating, I, I, I don't get to see every question or every comment. But if I did, it wasn't intentional. And I'm sorry, TikTok don't allow y'all to reach through there and slap me, so. <laughs> I'm kind of glad they don't. All right, then we'll come. I'll come right here. I hate to come into this mountain because it's so pretty, but we got to have another tree, so I ain't got no choice. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. All right, and we'll do the same thing on this one. Just come over here to top and start, just barely, barely pushing. And then as we go down, we use a little more pressure. And if you go to running out of paint, just flip the brush. Hey, McMoney, how are you tonight? Thank you for stopping in. All right, then we'll just do it the same way. From the middle out. Just using more to brush as you come down. That's all I'm doing. Just using more to brush. And then we'll bring it right down into the snow as well. Just like so. Thank you, Lisa. Well, I appreciate the love. Thank you very much. All right. Now, on these trees right here, since we're already at the bottom, I'm just going to come in here, and I'm just going to continue to push up a little, like a little grassy area out here, make it look kind of like some bushes, about like so. I just kind of want to give them a, Kind of an angled look here. About like that. It's kind of. Just a little. Little area of bushes out here. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, Mac Money. All right. Now I am washing. I wash my fan brush. I'm gonna come over here and dry it. Got to get it good and dry. And I'm gonna bring it up here in my white. And I just want to load it up with some white paint on both sides. All right, now, before I do that right quick, I'm going to take just a little bit, I don't know if y'all can see my palette, I'm going to take a little bit of my dark sienna right here, that's probably a little too much, but I got out enough, all right, I'm going to pull it out kind of flat up here, then I'm going to take a little bit of my white, and I'm going to pull it out over the top of it, just like so. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, where'd the brown go? It's under it. Okay. I'm going to come across here and pick me up just a little roll. And watch what it does up here on the canvas. When I come up here to highlight this tree. See how it gave me both colors? You might not be able to see the brown from where, I'm, from where you're at. But it, it gave me a little of the brown. And a little of the white. And I'll do it again. Well, you can see the brown this time. You can't really see the white this time. There it is. Just like so.
speed the process up. Well, I can't really speed the process up too much because the teacher comes out in me when I'm painting and I get to talking and oh I'm sorry not me <laughs> but that is my excuse every time I go to paint the teacher wants to come out in me and next thing you know alright now I got this fan brush that I loaded up with white and on the come up here and on right when I first start I want to touch long ways so I can catch that top of these trees first like so and all I'm gonna do is just add just a very little bit of highlight on this snow side oh, psh, yeah on the snow side on the light side so I'm gonna come up here and I just want to touch. Now this is such a light touch. I mean it is so light. Now these trees look like they got a little snow on them. But they won't be drooping down with snow like. Uh, like uh, heavy snow bearing trees. I know, I know you know what I'm talking about. Like in some paintings. The limbs will just be real heavy with snow. Or these won't be quite, they won't have quite that much snow on them, but they'll have enough that you can see it. Or at least I hope you can. <clears throat> And it'll pick up a little of that blue that's in there too. And that's that's a good thing. But now, like I said, this is such a light touch. It is not a heavy touch at all. In fact, if you come up here and touch it too heavy, it's going to create mud. And, uh... Then you have to scrape it all out, add it back, start over. So just keep that in mind. It is a very light touch. And if that paint, when you're trying this, if it don't come off your brush, get you just a tad bit of a, I mean, just a drop of thinner. Or you can use a little bit of liquid white or liquid clear. Anything to thin the paint down just a little. If you decide to use thinner, don't use very much. Don't let it touch your liquid clear. All right, then we'll get over here on our last tree. And we'll do it the same way. It is such a light touch. Just barely touching. That's all I'm doing. Just letting that paint pull right off. Don't let your brush drag or anything like that. Just be extra careful. Alright. This tree here... I'm gonna, I'm gonna add a little more to it because it's got a couple places that you can't see it really. But about like that, it's all you want to do. And then Leave it alone. Don't quit. Keep piddling like I do.
John's girlfriend says hi. Looks great. Well, thank you, John's girlfriend. Does John's girlfriend have a name, or should we just call you John's girlfriend? <laughs> I'll slow down, Locksmith. <laughs> oh, I need an excuse to slow down a little bit. Marty. Okay. Well, thank you, Marty. I appreciate that. All right. Now we are going to pick up a one inch brush again. I'm going to dry it. I'm going to come up here in my white. Now this white's got just a little bit of blue in it where it got contaminated earlier. It's not a lot, just a little. And I'm just going to tap straight down into it. And I'm going to come right here on that spot where we made the little bush looking things. Leaving some dark. I'm going to come up here and I just want to lightly tap. Just very lightly. Come up here and tap on the indication of a little snow up here. It's not going to take much at all. And like I said, make sure you leave some dark. This is one area you don't want to kill all the dark yet. Because if you do, it's going to it's gonna look like a big glob of white paint up here. It will not be attractive at all. So, very gently, I do mean very gently, just touch you on a little white up here. And leave it alone right there. Don't <laughs> don't think, okay, I could put a little more right there. Leave it alone. Oh, my God, a new Bob Ross. <laughs> I wish. I'm far from Bob. Thank you, Coons. How are you, man? Glad to see everybody in here tonight. This is inspiring. There is some excellent artists in here right now. I'm telling you. You get kind of nervous when you're painting in such good company. You think, oh boy, I'm going to make a mistake. <laughs> All right. I'm going to come right here under these bushes now. And I'm just going to pull out a little of this dark color right into the snow. Even though our sunlight, I mean our moonlight is coming from this direction, I'm still going to pull a little of this color out and make it look like it's shadow. Even though I know shadow wouldn't be that direction. Thank you, Robina. Am I saying that right, Robina? Harold's being funny tonight. No, Harold, being serious, John. There is some, there is some, some excellent painters in here right now, and it's it's nerve wracking when you paint in front of you guys. Now, like I said, I know that the shadow wouldn't come this direction, but I think by doing this, it'll give you that little bit of darkness you need at the bottom to sell that. Illusion of depth. Okay, glad. Thank you for being here, Rubina. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Kenzie. I appreciate that. All right. Keeping an eye on our little bright spot. We're still good for now. Because we did manage to pick up a little dark right there. But that kind of... It kind of looks... It looks good the way it kind of blended down to the uh, light spot. So we'll just kind of work it, work it on in and let them kind of live together right there. 
Thank you, kindness. I appreciate it. All right, I'll take just another little, just a very little bit of my white. And I'll come back up here and I will touch my highlight again and just kind of work it in. I'll do that as often as I think about it because I don't want to, I don't want to lose this bright spot in this painting. And then just lightly let it blend in. Because it's my hopes that when this painting's done, if, it, if I can remember to keep that spot, I just want it to look like it's glowing right in here. Thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate that. Let me see how I need to do this. I'll tell you what I'll do. McMoney, we figured up a while ago that I think I've actually been oil painting now six years. I mean, five years oil painting. Uh, painting painting six years because I painted well probably five and a half because I only painted about six months with the acrylic before I uh, started with the uh, I found a Bob Ross instructor and I painted with her about a year before I decided to become an instructor myself alright I just loaded my brush up this time with straight Prussian blue And I'm going to come right up here, and I just want to real loosely give myself the indication of some, some tree leaves. And these are going to be tree leaves that are somehow or another still living through the, through the winter, but this is probably going to be what does them in right here. Oh, Jack Frost is going to have his way with them after this. So, this will probably be their last little, their last little, little bit of life they got left. And we'll bring them down onto the snow a little, and then I'll come across here with a little. Little row of bushes. I've been craft painting since 1979. Oh, wow. Well, if you've been painting that long on crafts, I bet they are beautiful. All right, then I'm going to start doing me some little, little bushes over here. And I'll just bring them down. And just let them run into the snow like so. Right before it gets to our real bright spot. And what that will do is by having that little bit of dark right there. It will make that little spot brighter. Or I'm hoping it does. It should. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to clean this brush again. Then we'll come up here and grab my script liner brush. 
Now this is where I have to be careful because I'm going to have to use a little bit of this thinner to thin this paint out. And we got liquid clear up here, so I can't use much thinner. So this paint's going to be a lot thicker than I normally like for it to be, but ceramic lighthouse. Oh, wow. I bet they are. All right. I just want to come up here and give myself the indication of a little trunk. About like so. With a couple of switches on it. And if you don't know what a switch is, you ain't from the south. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many of these will be seen, but if we cover them up, at least we got the practice of putting them in. All right. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to pull me down a little more white. I'm going to tap right into the white again with the one inch brush again. Same brush I used a minute ago. And here again, this is going to be a very, very, very light tap. I'm going to come right up to the top of this one. And I just want to start tapping on some color. And here again, you don't want to kill all the dark. Because even though we got snow that's falling on this tree, we don't want it we don't want it so covered with snow that it kinda weighs the branches down yet. In fact I guess if we wanted to we could call this like the first snow. I guess we could if we wanted to. Since it's our paint. But just like so, we want to just add a little white here and there. Just indicate a little snow on the tree. And then when we get down to what we're going to call bushes, we want to leave a dark separation between them. And that way it, it gives us that separation of color we're going to need to we'll start right here and then we'll just give ourselves the indication of a few little snow covered bushes sitting out here under this under this tree just just little indications of bushes is all we're looking for but we still want to keep our dark The one thing you don't want to do is kill all the dark. That's always important. Because without dark shadows, everything turns out flat and it, it just don't it just don't mesh. All right, I'm going to clean this brush again. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate that. All right. I'll just touch my dark color just a little bit. And I'm going to come out over here, right under these, under these little bushes. And I'm going to give myself the indication of a shadow over here. And I'm going to pull that shadow down toward my, toward my bright spot. Without dark, you can't have light. Exactly. That is exactly right. Come out right in there and just pull that, just pull these out just like so.
All right, and I want this to blend in. I don't want it to look like it's in front of it. I want it to blend into the light spot over here. Just like that. All right, I'll drop that brush in the thinner. And I'll come up here and grab me a little small, very small little fan brush. And I'll get just a little bit of clean white on it. And I'll come back up here again now. And I'll just start bringing that white down again. And across here like so. So don't forget, we want that we want that moonlight hitting this spot right here. This is this is what's going to be our brightest spot in the painting, I think. What part of the world are you in? I am in Mississippi, John. All right, and then just very lightly bring these colors together, just like so. Just try to blend them so softly that you can't see where one starts and one stops. But just like so. North Arkansas. What part of North Arkansas, John? Mount Home. Oh man, that's a beautiful area. Do you know where Horseshoe Lake is? Or Horseshoe Bend Lake? Or Horseshoe Bend, Arkansas, whatever it's called? I've got a brother that lives there. All right, I'm cleaning my one-inch brush again. All right, I'm going to dry it off, make sure it's good and dry. Come back up here, get me some more white. I think I'm going to put out a little more white. Love blue winter scenes, they warm cold. Hey, Mick. Thank you, buddy. I'll do that, John, if I'm ever up that way. All right, I'm going to come right here where this where this white kind of stops. And I'm going to pull me down a spot just like so. Just like that. Then I'm going to come right over here beside it and pull me down another spot. And then another spot. Just like so. And I'll get me just a little more white. Come right here beside this one. And I want to do the same thing on this side. And start letting it get darker. As I get away from the moonlight. Or from the center. Just pull it straight down. Like so. I was in your lab the other night, Mick, and uh, you're so busy or you never seen my comments or either that or mine wasn't showing up. I was talking about your dead tree you put in your painting. That, that was sharp. I like that. 
All right. Now I just want to make sure all of these are good and straight along here. That's real important. That these are pulled down straight. Just like so. All right. And then very lightly. Very lightly. I want to come across them. And give ourself a little indication of reflections in here. Just like so. We'll either let this be water or a nice covered pond or whatever our imagination lets it be here in a little bit. But for now, it's just there. All right, and I'll wash that brush again. <coughs> All right, I'll take a short break right here and we'll see if we got any questions up to this point. Got any questions at all? We'll try to get them answered. If anybody's came in that I've missed and I didn't speak to, let me say uh, hello. And I hate I missed you. You're going to put in some big boulders that the naughty kid. <laughs> Kyle, you all about the big boulders, ain't you, buddy? <laughs> I'm going to have to do your painting with some boulders in it one day. I'll see that now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh... How long you wait from liquid clear? How long wait from liquid clear the the your blue coat? Uh, I don't. I don't wait at all. It's I put that on and then I immediately start. There's no wait. It's put the liquid clear on and as fast as you can get your brush in the blue, you can get started. All right, do we have any more questions? You're putting in those trees that covered up the mountain. You know, Bob. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, he would. He'd come in there with a big, huge tree and cover up something. I left a, I left a good bit of the mountain showing through between the trees, and I left a good bit of it showing right there, so I, I didn't kill the whole illusion. Yeah, you got to be brave. Yeah, John, you will use a lot less. Probably about a quarter of the amount. You know, sometimes Kyle, I, I wish he wouldn't do it too, but he always makes it work somehow or another. That's me, MacMoney. I'm just once I get to a stopping point, I'm there. I don't I don't want to be brave. <laughs> But now Bob did have this this technique mastered. He was a master at the. Uh, Bill Alexander taught him well. I'll say that.
or he learned well. Either way, they had it worked out. I'll, I'll give them that. I guess if we out of questions, I will go ahead and wash another one inch brush right quick and we'll carry on. Oh, I do need to put out a little bit more white while I'm here, if I can find it without creating too much havoc. Yeah, he was. Yeah, Bill's a real good teacher if you can deal with that personality. He's extreme, but he's good. Or he was good. There you go, Mac Money. <laughs> That's a good idea, too. All right, clean and dry one inch brush again. I hope I can get away with doing this with a one inch brush. I'm gonna try. All right, I'll come up here and pick up just a little of the white on my one inch brush. I'm gonna come back up here And I'm going to pull over till I get to my water or ice or whatever it is. I'm going to come over here and I just want to lightly come down into it like that. Just, just like so. And then I'll just pull it in. Let's see, I might get away with just pulling it in flat. Like this. Yeah, I think I can. How about that? Well, feel free, John. If you do, send me a, send me a copy of it, if you will. I'd like to see it. I'll come across here. I'm just going to keep pulling right down into it, like so. Then I'll come from this side and pull down into it a little, like so. Alright, that's a little steep over here, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of take some of that steepness out. I do want it to look a little lower over here because we know that we know that water will uh, in acrylics. Sure you can, Bob. Just don't show me up too bad. Okay, about like that. All right. About like that. 
Mine will probably take a week to complete. Well, you know something, Bobby? With the way you paint, it'd be well worth the week. Because your work is amazing. All right. I just dip my uh, scrap liner brush in just a little bit of thinner. And I got just a tiny bit of Prussian blue on it. And I want to come up here at the edge of this, this little bit of snow we just pulled in. And I kind of want to give it a just a little, little lip along here. Just a little. I want it to kind of look like it's sitting up on top of the, the snowy bank here. Or on top of the little ice bank. And then I'll pull it across here. And like so. And I'm using just a very, very little bit of Prussian blue here. And then you can pull it up in places to kind of make it look like the the snow is in layers rather than one solid sheet. Plus, it kind of keeps your your line level across here, about like so. Then I'll take just a little bit. I'm going to touch just a little bit of white on my on my uh, script liner brush now. And I'm going to put in just a couple little bright white streaks along here. Just at random. Just like so. We can put a little up here. I just want this to be good clean white. Up here like so. Alright. I'm going to clean that brush. Then I'm going to reach up here and I'm going to grab my real soft little sable brush that I use for blending. And those spots I just put in, I want to take and just, just barely pull through them in the direction of my, of my land. If it's going sideways, I want to pull them sideways. I just don't want to blend them completely out. I just want them to look like little little bright spots that might indicate the snow piled up in a in a spot or two. Then we'll smooth out this straight line back here. We'll kind of give it a little misty effect where it's not totally straight. Give it that. And then very lightly come back up here. And just pull up into some of these. Trees in the background back here. And make it look like we're looking at trunks. And some of them. Then I'll clean it out. And then come back and just kind of lightly blend out the bottom again. Just like so. Just pull these colors down. And I'm just lightly blending. And we just got us a few dark spots here and there. Alright, then I'll go ahead and wash this brush.
Then I'll dry it out real good. Then I'll come up here and get me a little more of my white. Just a little. Don't need much. Then I'm going to come back in here. And I want to lay this, this white back on in here. Just wanna, I just want to brighten this area up. Just put on some white. Because this is still that spot where our moon's hitting. Across here. Just about like so. Then I'll dry it out again. Uh, John, this is a 16 by 20. And the, uh, the campfire is also a 16 by 20. All right, then I'm just going to come across here and just lightly blend that white back in. And there again, trying to blend it into the, into the shadows to where one don't kill the other. And I'll just blend it all the way down to the, to the water, like so. And that gives us our pretty decent little light spot in there. I thought about doing a cabin in this painting, but I kind of got my banks pretty steep. And I'm scared if I set a cabin up there, it may look like it's falling off. And we don't want a cabin falling off. But I guess what we could do to uh, break up some of the some of the monotony across here is we can take us just a tad bit of this blue, and we can come up here and pop in the indication of a few little few little bushes along here. We don't have to put many, but just just a few to kind of break up all that all that blank space maybe one over here coming down toward the water maybe one right in here I don't think we need many just a couple here and there yeah I agree David I don't I don't think a cabin's really gonna gonna fit us right now not with those steep banks. All right, we'll pick us up just a little bit of our white. Don't want much, just a little. And we'll come up here and touch on a little highlight on these. Leave them a little dark in them. Just kind of make them look like they're covered in a little bit of snow. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We'll just hit these little indication of bushes we just put in. Well, Gail, you can learn. It's, uh, believe me, I, I was not born knowing how to do this. Uh, and, and, and I think if I can do it, anybody can because, uh, I'm telling you, it's it it takes practice, and and you know I won't I won't lie to anybody and tell them it don't. Um, it takes a little practice and a little time to learn the different things that the brush and paint will do, and different little techniques. But once you learn those, it 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 comes uh, easier. I would say that easier. I won't say easy. But it, it gets easier. 
Every painting you do seems like it gets a little bit easier. Alright, I'm going to come right here under these and pull out just a little bit of shadow on them just to set them down in the snow. Like that. A little bit on this side. All like so. Just barely pulling out up here. Just a little bit. Just a little bit of indication just to make them look like they're set down in the snow. Thank you, Chrissy. Uh, David, I have four cockatiels. I used to have uh, I used to have six, but two of them died, and uh, now just four. And right now, I guess they feel like they're not getting enough attention, so they decided they want to talk a little bit tonight. All right. I'm going to go back up here one more time because I really want this area to be I want this area bright bright so I'll just lightly come back up here I really want this area lit up I have a dog, a cat, a turtle, and a bearded dragon. Oh my goodness. Well, I've got four birds and two little miniature dachshunds that think they're Rottweilers. And I have a neighborhood cat. About, well, I had three, four rabbits. Now we got about 20 something rabbits because, um, uh, I guess mom and daddy decided that the family wasn't big enough. I don't get to see them very often. Since they've had the the babies, they stay tucked away in the woods back here pretty good. But every now and then they'll uh, they'll come out and eat. And uh, I have I know one possum. And a couple of armadillos. So we got a whole yard full of animals. I am from Mississippi, Gail. Oh, yeah, I'm a squirrel. That's right. My wife said, don't forget your squirrel. I did forget the squirrel. We have a little squirrel that loves to come on the front porch and eat the bird seed now. Five dogs, one cat, 13 chickens, one rabbit, and countless quail. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we did pick up some turkeys, too. I saw some turkeys out here the other day for the first time. Georgia. Now in Florida. Squirrel is awesome. Oh, that little squirrel, he is a mess. He's running my dachshunds crazy. He is absolutely driving them crazy. Especially my dachshund named Wyatt. Patches, he's kind of laid back. He don't really care. But, <laughs> but boy, oh Wyatt, he, he's, trying, he, he's trying his best to catch him a squirrel. He just ain't having no luck doing it. All right. I'm going to come over here in my dark areas now. And I want to... Well, you know something I just realized? If I scratch in... Sticks and twigs over here, they're going to be blue because I got blue paint under here. And this was not a, they're not going to show up as white. So I guess I'll scratch in some blue little sticks and twigs tonight. If they show up. Yeah, apparently we do, David. I do. I always have. I've always been an animal lover.
it does add some some good details all right let's see what we got here I could keep piddling this thing to death but I don't uh I don't know that it's really necessary at this point. About the only thing we could do, maybe put up a couple little, and I guess we could do that. That's that's not really a big deal. That won't hurt nothing. I'll take just a tad bit of bird umber, just a little. I'll come over here and I'll add a just a little dead. Just a little dead limb sticking out right there. And I'll add a little, little small one right here. And maybe one right there. All right, I'm going to quit before I piddle this thing to death. Then I will. Uh, David, I hate to do this as a shameless plug to my YouTube channel. But on my YouTube channel, I do step-by-step -step tutorials. And I have no music playing at all. And I do step-by-step uh, -step tutorials with just me talking. And I do need as many subscribers over there as I can get. Because I'm running close to my thousand limit being up by October. So go check me out over there if you want to. Yeah, I got to get to that 1,000. I got to get there. Paul Hallman. Hey, brother. It's a painting with Harold. I just left a week's off of it over there. So, yeah, check it out if you don't mind. And uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate that. Oh man, give it a, give it a go. I hope I hope you do. If you need better pictures of it, I'll have uh, I'll have pictures of it posted. You missed it. Yeah, you did, Paul. <laughs> well, thank you, John. I appreciate that. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. And good night to you, sir. Hope you have a good night. But yeah, Bobby, you you feel free to. Feel free to paint it, man. I'd love to see you paint it. Thank you, Crystal. Oh, you got my support, sir. Anybody that paints like you do needs my support. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> Uh, thank you, David. You have a good night, man. All right, I can sit here and chat with you all night if you want to, or until y'all get tired of hearing my voice. We can talk about painting, or we can talk about whatever you want to talk about. I am not in a hurry. Uh, John, the actual step-by-step -step process won't be on YouTube unless I can figure out how to get the paintings from TikTok to YouTube. What do you do with all your art? Uh, David, some of it sells. Uh, some of it piles up in a big pile back here, seven foot tall. <laughs> uh, Christmas gifts for some of it. Just different things. Thank you, Jack. I appreciate that. 
But I certainly appreciate y'all going over there and doing that on my YouTube channel for me. Uh, all right, John. I'm going to try to explain this. And I may be wrong. But from what I understand, you can go back and download it from TikTok. Now, I don't know what happens to it once you download it from TikTok. I don't know if you can if you can save it and move it to a, a, a oh goodness, a, a editing program or not. But if you could, then all I'd have to do is just go through and edit out a lot of this talking and stuff, I guess. And uh, see if I mean I don't know I don't I don't know how you would do it. It goes to your phone, then upload to YouTube. Really? So I can download it straight from TikTok and just send it straight to YouTube. Is that what you said, Mick? Because I got a lot of people on YouTube that like to see this. Yeah, they do, John, but I don't know how to work it. Go to settings, live center, scroll. I know how to get to the replays, and I've even seen where you can download them, but I just didn't know what happens once you download it. And if I can get out of editing and just straight upload, then that's what I'll do. Because I hate editing. The only thing is the people on YouTube may get tired of me talking to people on TikTok that they can't see. Goes to your phone memory card. Okay, my phone don't have a memory card, Mick. But I got enough memory I could upload it to my phone or download it to my phone. And just upload it straight to YouTube. Okay, cool. I didn't know you could do that. That's awesome. I'll have to try it. John, if I can get it to work, yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll put it on YouTube. Yeah, they are talking videos, but, you know, on here I'm talking to people, they, you know, like, instead of painting right now, I'm just steady talking. <laughs> but I guess that, you know, if they got this far in the video, they can just click off of it. Once I get to that, you know, if, if they uh, if I upload it and they they get to the end of it and they say, well, who's he talking to? They can't see my TikTok people. They can always click off the video right then. And some got the Rottweiler stirred up. Well, I guess I could always go in and just edit out the end of it, you know, edit all this part out. A leaf fell in the yard. Yeah, that's all it takes for them. Did uh did John Nafel leave? Can Nafel leave or is he still here? He may he may contact me if he left through messenger or something since he won the painting I don't know if I can get this up closer and turn it straight where y'all can see it tonight or not try to get it a little closer maybe some of the details will show I hate I got to record with my phone. <clears throat> but we're going to get to 3,000 pretty soon. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was uh, just hopefully trying to buy a relief from some of this heat we've been having here in Mississippi. I mean, it's been terrible hot. But I don't think this paint is going to be enough to help.
A <laughs> hundred and four. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> well, ninety here feels about like a hundred and ten because this crazy humidity we got. Yeah, I don't blame you, Kyle. Our light bill came in this past month, and whew, we won't get into figures because it was rough. But I don't guess it was too bad. I mean, we do we do use it. So, all right, Bobby, you have a good night, brother. Thank you for being here again. Wow, that's tough, Melissa. You leaving out too, Kyle? Let's see. I will be live again. What is tonight? Thursday. I will be live. Oh, good idea. Yeah, I'm done, but I was just sitting here chit-chatting. We got 16 viewers now. I mean, I figured just uh, folks just hanging around. But as long as I'm talking to people, I ain't just gonna, I ain't just gonna leave. I'll, I'll try to be uh, hospitable. <laughs> because if I end up load uploading this to YouTube, I'll just, I'll go in and edit out the end of it, I guess, or I'll try to. I do hate editing videos, though. All right. Well, I appreciate you being here, buddy. You have a good night. I'm going to see what I can do about working on you a, a boulder painting. <laughs> uh, now crappy old five I am not related to Bob Ross at all but I do appreciate it I really do yeah YouTube is uh, full of information it really is Take care, buddy. All right. I'll grab my phone over here. And I will try to get you guys a close-up of the entire painting here. like so. All right, John. You have a great night, man. 
you're trying to think of a way to sketch the painting. Uh, Jack, if you would like to, look me up on Facebook at Harold Weeks and send me a message and I'll send you a picture of it. Thank you, Helen. I appreciate that. Ruby Mountain in northern Nevada. Well, I thank you. Uh, Melissa, I've never seen it, but I'll take your word for it. But that's... Uh, I think I covered it all. It's pretty much... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. Well, I will say good night to everybody. Thank you all very much for coming in. I will, I will be back live Saturday night. And if you want to paint along, I'm painting on a white canvas Saturday night. Another 16 by 20. And it'll be covered in liquid white. So if you want to paint alone, just get your brushes and stuff out. And we'll have a big time. But until then, just remember, I love all you guys. God loves you more. Y'all have a blessed night and have a blessed weekend. Thank you, Brenda. And I hope to see y'all again Saturday night. And from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all. I really appreciate it.